And joining us on the Harbor One Hotline is Dan Orlovsky, ESPN. Dan, you just heard Keyshawn. A lot of uh, zappy fever going around New England. He says it's not an overreaction. He may he should keep his job. Do you uh, do you agree? Of course, I don't agree. <laughs> I, oh my gosh, dude! Um, listen, I love Key. I love Key. I do. I love him. Like him and I have become so cool. But this is like this is what like happens when we we get caught up in the moment and we forget first first of all Keyshawn hates every quarterback that doesn't play for the Jets all right yeah. let's just be very clear about that most most players I mean he doesn't think Josh Allen's good so <laughs> like that that's part of this conversation um I Bailey Zappi has played really cool football like he's 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 played nice football he's done exactly what he's wanted but I haven't seen this young man make many. I, I said this last week. He, he, I don't think against the Lions. First of all, he played the 31st and 32nd ranked past Stevens in the NFL. So awesome. Um, he hasn't made many like NFL legit throws where you sit there and go, man, that ball had to come out before the receiver is ready. And, and there's two defenders there and he's got to throw that ball to a perfect spot and place it exactly there. Probably had two or three more this past week against Cleveland. I said, they're all a nice job. Um, no quarterback has had more time to throw the football in the past two weeks than Bailey Zappi, and that's part of because their offensive line has done such a great job. They've max protected the play action. I mean, guys are butt naked open, so I am not minimizing his performance. He has done a nice job, but Matt Jones has done stuff at the NFL level consistently and far more often that we sit there and go, that's what it looks like. So, and, and so you're right. It's not just Keyshawn, but it's like it's a lot of, you know, guys that that work at your station on that platform and we're going to play almost every single one of them because they're all out of their mind they're all out of their mind and the whole herky jerky yeah. most yeah i feel like they are it's like why is why this desire to to push zappy to the front why this desire to say that i don't know for some reason he looks better like w- like he's got a certain swag about him like wh- what does that any of that have to do with with mac being the starting quarterback dan I think part of it is people just want to throw things out there and, and see if they stick. There's no repercussion. I think people want to try to be the first person to say something in our industry rather than really focusing on being right. There's a truth here that Mac Jones still is unquestionably the Patriots starting quarterback and is going to be a very good pro for a very long time. And Bailey Zappi has proved that he can play in the league. Both of those things can be true at the same time. And my question for everybody that wants to say this is, do you not remember last year? Do, you, do we not remember how Mac Jones played last year and had this team in every football game and, and was by far the best rookie quarterback that played last season? A guy that, it, and Pro Bowl voting is what it is, but like he was in the Pro Bowl last year. And I understand that he did not play well in the first part of the season. I think he played the first two games, if I'm accurate with that, maybe the first three, but certainly the first two, uh, I get all that. But their offensive line had played awful, and they weren't running nearly the way that they are right now. And they, they their philosophy shifted once Bailey Zappi became the starting quarterback. Guys, the touchdown pass to Hunter Henry, I have a six-year-old who's a, who's a tremendous – my daughter's making that throw. The, the two passes to Jacoby Myers, my daughter's making – I mean, these dudes are wide open. So I think that – not all that different than the Cowboys situation was. You sit there and go, is it because the quarterback play has become so much better or is it because we've kind of shifted our philosophy and our identity and what we're doing and now the quarterback is giving the opportunity to play well? Dan, why do people want a backup quarterback to jump in so often in these situations why do people see so much upside want so much hope from the fan perspective and now from some of the national media perspective wanting this narrative grass is always greener to people i mean i was a backup quarterback in the city of detroit and i remember like everyone used to think like around town i would walk around town and people would talk about me like i was aaron Rodgers. they would come up to me and be like oh and be like, guys i haven't played in three years you, you know, so like everyone always wants the next best thing, right? And we certainly want that in sports. Um, and we, we all believe as fans that it's, it's all about just the quarterback. And if the quarterback just played better, and look, the quarterback's playing better and our team is winning. He, they play the number one or the 32nd and 31st ranked pass defenses in the NFL. Okay? You would 
certainly hope that you could have some success against them. You know, and New mm-hmm. England is has has gotten back on track because Matthew Judon's playing like a star, and Kyle Duggar is becoming a star, and they set the edge against Cleveland really well. And Cleveland's defense is god awful, and so you know we live in this world where it's well we're winning because of the quarterback or we're losing because of the quarterback, and that's just very rarely true. And I think that fans. Um, often want um, there's beauty in the unknown and I think that they sit there and go if our team's playing poorly just switch the quarterback and the guy behind them will, will play better talking to Dan Orlovsky ESPN Dan I'm going to go on the other side of this because you talk about we, you know watching Mac Jones play last year and we did and and I was some of the numbers since the bye week last year that's an eight game sample size and yeah, you know, whether you talk about rookie wall, whatever it might be, league figuring them out. But you know, last week you were talking about he does a lot of things elite. And is there a chance you overrate Mac Jones? Um, I think I always yes, um, but I think there's a chance I overrate a lot of quarterbacks because <laughs> um, one kind of I got into this business and one of one of my I guess motives was or missions was I wanted other like the fans to understand that there were other great quarterbacks than just Tom Brady. And there were other great coaches than just Bill Belichick, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I know how hard that position is to play. And so I try to always paint these guys of like, listen, this guy may not be Patrick Mahomes, but he's still really good. Or this guy may not be Josh Allen, but he's still really good at all this stuff. Um, I've, I've, I feel like I've got a pretty good, good grasp on Mac. Um, you know, candidly, I, I remember calling Mac's game live against Arkansas and his senior year, probably midway through the season, I was like, he can't be a first-round pick in the NFL. He just doesn't look like them. He just doesn't look like the guys at that position that are the elite guys in this league. And after studying his tape, I was like, well, I was wrong on that because he's he's got everything you want. Everything you want is at any a, a, a 10 out of 10 other than athleticism, like playmaking athleticism and uh, like super powerful arm. Can, can you get into that a little bit more? Are you talking about just recognition of defenses getting in and out of plays? Like when you say that, you said the last week too, like elite. What do yeah. you see when you see film? Because we do see the arm isn't great, the athleticism isn't great. So it's like we always say his biggest asset is his brain. What do yeah. you see exactly? Yeah, I'm, I'm, so I, have, I have always say this: he he's not athletic, but he plays fast. Um. You know, he has such an ability to cancel out things pre-snap. And, you know, if, if this pass concept has got four different options given the, 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 the defense, he, does a, he has this really great ability to know, well, the defense is this. So really the first and second option aren't options, so I can go three to four real quickly. And that's what allows him to play so fast. He's got this great ability to know who he isn't. So you, he, and that's what he did so well last year was he never tried to become something that he wasn't. Nor it, he never tried to be this runaround athlete. He never tried to be this guy that was going to throw 65 yard bombs downfield. He was never going to try to make people miss. He was always about, you know, kind of playing that point guard role, that point guard mentality and doing it at an incredibly efficient level. He knows, uh, you know, one of my favorite sayings that I've kind of, tried to describe offensive football is he knows what the problem of his play is, but, but also the opportunity. Hey, I got this play on and fudge, dude, if they're in this coverage or if this pressure, we got a problem, you know, and what's the, how do I solve that problem? He's a great problem solver. He also knows, man, if we got this play on and they're in this, this defense, I got a great opportunity right now to, to, to get this throw. So, you know, he does that all at a really, really high clip on a consistent basis um, to sit here and say that he threw some interceptions. Of course, he wasn't getting protected. They weren't playing well. He's frustrated. There's, he's highly competitive. But that, those are all very good traits of a high-level quarterback. So I, 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 don't, I remain steadfast, dude. Mac is going to be a very good player for a long time. All right, so we're talking about Dan Orlovsky. So, Dan, you talked about like how bad the defenses were that they were able to play with and that Bailey Zappi got to take advantage of. But I've seen quarterbacks, rookie quarterbacks, with a little more talent – with under, with the same situation, and they looked terrible. Fumbled the ball, did a lot of bad things. So I would say, how much credit do you give the coaching staff to actually get Bailey Zappi ready for these last two games? Because we yeah, we uh, ripped the hell out of them, and now we have the two two game sample size of them, you know, working their way through with a young quarterback. Yeah, a lot. Um, and I kind of liken it to the New York Giants situation. You know, I've said this about everyone saying, well, you know, Brian Dable's now putting Daniel Jones in positions to be successful. No, he's not. He's putting, he's not putting him in situations where he knows he's going to fail. 
you know, and exposing him to his greatest weakness. And I think that's the perfect way to describe what New England has done with Zappi. They're just not putting him in positions to fail. You know, they, they, they get into really comfortable passing situations. Um, when they drop him back to pass, it's eight and a half out of ten times. They have seven guys in protection. So you don't have to worry about having to play. I, I say this all the time. Quarterbacks don't throw interceptions because they get tricked that often. They throw interceptions because they have to make a decision quicker than they're ready. And that's become and that's strictly attributed to pressure. So when you have set these seven man protections, you know, you're you're you you sit here and go, Well, I'm not gonna be under pressure that often, so my decision doesn't have to happen that quickly. I mean, watch how many times he hitches in the pocket, guys. I mean, he threw three crossers the other day, one to Jacoby, one to um, uh, Bourne, and then one again to, I want to say, a second one to Bourne. He takes three hitches on all three of them. Yeah, like that's, that's easy football. That's, and I'm not taking anything away from the young man's performance. He's done well. But this is more attribu- attribution to, yes, the coaching staff not putting him in situa- situations where he's not ready to play in that world. The offensive line's done a much better job. They've played subpar defenses. They've ran the heck out of the football. I mean, they pop a 60-yarder on third down on one back power. So, um, hmm. again, uh, you know, like I think this is a, a little bit more – Devontae's made plays on the perimeter. So uh, this has been – I've said this about Dallas. You've realized that you ha- you can be more than just Mac Jones on offense. It doesn't have to just be the Mac Jones show. So, Dan, uh, if slash when they bring Mac Jones back to be under center, what other lessons do they take away from this experience with Bailey Zappi and the way that the offense has been running? Do they change their approach with Mac Jones there compared to how he was early in the season? Yeah, it's a great question, and the answer is absolutely. And And I often – like. There's a difference between philosophy and identity. You know, their identity is they're going to play good, fundamental, sound, technically good, don't turn the football over football. So that's your identity. Your philosophy, where six weeks ago might have been, well, uh, you know, these play callers and uh, maybe we'll just have Mac Jones take control of everything. Well, the philosophy now can shift to, well, maybe we'll be a little bit more of an under center of the team, uh, under center team, and, and we'll continue to lean on this run game and, and these guards that have played really good football. And we can create these one on one matchups on the perimeter with a little bit softer coverage and eight men in the box. Your philosophy now can shift to who you run your offense through, and that is your inside run game. I'm going to post a clip tomorrow morning on Twitter where. They line up in this – guys, because here's the thing. They're still calling, like, the same play consistently. You know, like, they're just – and I know they're just doing a much better job up front of allowing the play the chin to work. I'm going to post a clip on Twitter tomorrow morning. Dude, Jacoby Myers has, a, like, like, four catches in this game where they line up in the same formation, and he runs the same route, except at the top of the route he breaks one way, and the other time he breaks the other way. But everything else is the same. It's the same personnel. It's mm. the same split. It's the same action. It's the same defense. It's just that, you know, like, and the quarterback's got literally all day to throw, and those, like, I'm posting two plays of it out of the four because time, those two plays equate, like, 90 yards of offense. All right, well, listen, at mention play. us. Yeah, no, Dan, hey, last one for me real quick. There's a report here recently uh, actually came out today, according to sources, that Mac Jones is 85 to 90%. Isn't that 100% in professional sports? 90%? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, pretty much, you know, like I, I, I'm not a doctor, you know, it took 17 years to graduate from UConn. So like, I, I would imagine it's, it's pretty close unless they sit there and say he's got to be a hundred or the risk of injury, you know, is up. I, I don't know, you know, so I would imagine if he's 85 or 90%, um, and, and he looks like he can go, you know, operate exactly the way you want and play at the level that you expect him to play, then I would sit there and say, well, let's get our starting quarterback out on the field. Absolutely. All right, Dan, listen, man, we really appreciate the time. Uh, Thanks a lot. Looking forward to talking to you next week. Enjoy the games this weekend. Thanks, guys.